This is Muffy. He is 14 years old age, senile, half blind, half deaf. Actually, I think he's completely deaf. Um, yeah, he's still... I don't know why all my fur balls have tantrums. Look at this tantrum. Muffle. He got himself tangled up underneath the car somehow. The leash is supposed to go out. He was supposed to enjoy the sun. But he does this all the time. Muffy no. No. It's so senile. It knows nothing. And if it's not for me bringing him outside to enjoy the sun for a while, he would never want to come out. Muffy, stop. That's Muffle for you. And I guess the reason why he's so healthy, the only thing that's wrong with him, well, he's senile and half deaf and half blind, but otherwise he has absolutely no health issues. He doesn't even have, he gets his geriatric panel checked every single year. He doesn't even have diabetes. Um, I truly, Muffy, stop now. I truly believe that's due to me giving him, Muffy, stop. I truly believe that it's due to me giving him, I have to move away from this, due to me giving him um, a turmeric, he gets olive oil, he gets coconut oil, I put vitamin C in his food, alfalfa, a whole bunch of things um, that he gets. So uh, yeah, the turmeric is not really, and he even gets fish oil, I guess that's not really helping with his senility but <laughs> yeah otherwise he's extremely healthy nothing else wrong with him the big boys get that stuff as well sorry about that they get coconut oil olive oil and it's again turmeric um, vitamin c alfalfa fish oil pretty much daily in their food and so yeah, and then they get some vegetables and fruits and they both used to be on a raw diet um, but the raw diet did not uh, one of my shepherds did not like it at all and um, I stopped because he just did not want to eat the raw food any longer that's all he used to eat and he had in the raw food uh, I fed him raw for about nine months, him and Hachi. Hachi's four months younger than him, so Hachi, I fed him until he was uh, for three months, I guess, because the breeder um, gave him to me when he was eight weeks. So yeah, for about three months. And then uh, we moved on to kibble, which I absolutely hate. I think it's um, not nutritious for, for German Shepherds. I will start to introduce the raw food once again, it has to be kept um, in different meals. You can't mix the two because the digestion is completely different. Um, I do want to get into uh, feeding them raw. Um, they used to eat everything. Um, I used to go to this uh, meat place and um, they it was solely for dogs. And I used to purchase a lot of varieties of different uh, raw dog food, including tripe so healthy for their digestion um, but yeah I do want to start feeding them uh, you know either the kibble in the morning or the raw in the raw in the evening something like that so there's enough time that passes between the two for the, their digestive um, process and lately I have been um, giving them probiotics and OB digestive enzymes because his stomach I have noticed from the beginning actually he has always had a bad stomach um, yeah, so he just has a very sensitive stomach. But uh, other than that, yeah, they're uh, nothing what They're very healthy boys. Um, same as my Pomeranians, like both of them. And like I said with Muffy, 
it's a geriatric panel checked there's nothing ever the matter i'm actually surprised that he doesn't have diabetes because he is overweight even my vet is pleasantly surprised because Muffy is about four pounds overweight and for somebody of his small stature that's a lot it's like equivalent to probably about a hundred pounds in human uh human weight um and i i tried i he was on a diet for the longest time he's been overweight for years he was on a diet for a very long time and then he just seemed to gain it back um and uh, finally, there was actually a test that my doctor did do because of his weight gain. And she found out that he had a minor um, thyroid problem. So we started um, implementing thyroid um, um, medication in his, um, in, his, um, in his food. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's about it. It seemed to not be working. <laughs> because he's still overweight <laughs> he just likes to eat he goes around and picks from everyone's food even when I'm not looking um, so yeah it's kind of uh, it's interesting but uh, yeah having said that um, Muffy is uh, more somebody else's dog uh, than mine so uh, yeah I theoretically have three I'm just taking care of him and have been for a while because um, there's no way that this um, individual can look after him at this point in her life. So yeah, so now I'm taking care of an additional dog, which is Muffy. <clears throat> it's completely fine with me. It's not a problem whatsoever. But, and I just want to show you guys actually how beautiful it is here today. I'm always amazed how incredible incredibly gorgeous it is here. There's not a single cloud and I mean it's a grumpy crap cloud in the sky. Like look at this. And normally it's quiet. And Muffy's not there. Yep, sing away. Here, I sometimes feel like it's a ghost town. It's not that many people doing the winter program, and then the ones that are here when they leave to go out, um, it's even more quiet <laughs> now. Um, the summertime, this park looks completely different. It's so busy, so busy to the point where I feel kind of anxious. It's too much. Like on each, on each campsite, there's about 10 people and there's usually two or three vehicles parked in front of the, their campers. They're here in the summer camping and whatnot. Now that is a whole lot of people and I used to have um, kids running through my campsite and I have two German Shepherds not a really good idea I always have to say no uh -uh. you know just an accident waiting to happen and uh, this year my you know that was last year when Obi wasn't even a year and Hachi was still a baby as well but this year they're both um, uh, you know they're both over a year of age uh, therefore I it's a different story they're much more protective yeah, that's not going to work. If anybody wants to walk past my campsite at your own risk, I should put a sign up saying at your own risk. But yeah, this, so I find it kind of rude anyhow, because I'm paying for that spot. Not that other people can walk through it, if you know what I mean. You know, it's, you pay for it, that's your spot until you're paying for it. So it's kind of like your area, your property until you're renting it. So it's kind of rude that somebody else comes on my property that I'm paying for. I find that really intrusive. Um, there were a few um, ladies last summer that actually had people walking, like walking through their campsite to get, like for example, they would walk through a campsite across the street there to get uh, to the other side, like a shortcut instead of taking the road. And uh, the, the, these people did this so many times that um, this woman in particular felt so uncomfortable and she said one time she was undressing and they were walking by 
And I, I asked her, I said, why don't you say something? Because I'm, I'm not a very outspoken person. I would immediately say, no, this is not happening. <laughs> like I did last year with an incident of my own. And um, she replied back and said, well, I don't want to be confrontational. And I'm like, that's not confrontational. That's just uh, respect, you know, that's your, your spot. That's your space. That's just respect. It's common sense. And uh, of course, not many people have that anymore. But uh, so... Uh, Long story short, I basically said to her, look, if I catch them walking through your campsite, would you like for me to say something? She said, oh, you're, she was so grateful. She's like, you're a lifesaver. And uh, I said, it's not a problem at all. And you know, if you can't voice your, your concerns, <laughs> I definitely can. <laughs> um, and a few days later, what happened is I did catch them because you have to catch them. You can't just go up to them, right? You have to catch them, so I caught them, and uh, I said to them, look, she doesn't appreciate you walking through her campsite, and uh, there's a reason why, it's common sense that you just don't, that's her space, and they apologized, and they were quite friendly and stuff, but uh, yeah, so I have no problems voicing my concerns at all, no problems there, you know, and uh, yeah, that ha happened one, one time last year where a guy and he was always drunk he came uh, on a camping spot next to me and he was unpacking and everything and all of a sudden he just walked through my spot through my space to get to the camper on the other side of me and then his kids were running through my campsite and I'm like no it's just not happening sorry and yeah that was that you just have to tell them nicely you know you don't appreciate it and uh Hopefully they get the point. If not, then that's a different story. But, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little story. And uh, this looks really messy in the back here. It does not look like this normally at all. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it just. Uh, and I'm trying to downsize even further. I already downsized a lot. I will make a separate video about that as well, about how much I downsized. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, the, the ice is melting. And it's a good thing. But you know, RVing, you just have to have like a little bit of respect. Um, for people, for, for everyone, you know. Um, oh, so <laughs> the campsite here, we had a ban last year on, uh, on you know, making fires, right? So when the ban was lifted, I asked the manager, so, you know, are we permitted to go back and make uh, fires, campfires? And she said yes, but she said, put the fire inside the fire pit not on top of the grill and i said well where else would i put it and she told me you have no idea how many people have absolutely no common sense they make the fire on top let me just show you on top of the grill and not inside the fire pit now call me crazy but is that not normal like is, are people not normal anymore so they, this is the fire pit, okay, a normal person would put the fire inside. They put the fire on top of the grill. <laughs> okay. uh, hey, is that not stupid or, or just, just tell me what that is. <laughs> it's not normal, I know that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's where they would put the fire, on top of the grill. Like why? <laughs> why? So yeah, guys. I always say you can't fix stupid and that's my favorite saying I actually learned it from a very wise man you can't fix stupid you just cannot it's impossible so yeah <laughs> anyhow thanks for watching a moment in my life and I will talk to you later what Obi would do for a ball bye guys